J-Lo. What's wrong with this bitch? Why she keep getting married, man? See, what y'all don't know, she need a green card. That's what's up. That bitch needs citizenship. That's what's going on with it. And she is a beautiful woman. She is very beautiful. I, I, she, give her her depth, she is a beautiful woman. But I'm telling you, she is of the Latin persuasion. So as soon as she drop a baby, she is gonna be shaped like SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Her ass is gonna be shaped like a bag of Blockbuster tapes. <laughs> that ain't never been rewound, ain't never. They got a bunch of late fees on them there. <laughs> yeah, I am 17, so unfortunately for you ladies, you know, keep it down, you know, cause you'll go to jail. Also, guys, if you have a girlfriend, uh, I get hit on her, because if you do anything, you also go to jail. It's a win-win. Yeah, but I'm, I'm into cougars, you know? You know? I think 21-year-olds are so hot. You just ridiculous. I just graduated high school, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, I went to an all-boys school, which wasn't pretty cool. Uh, it was awful, actually. There's like farting contests. Like, one time a dude crapped himself, and he won. <laughs> Here's something that should never happen in an old boys' school, never get an erection, because, uh, yeah, there's no excuse for that at all. At all. I got to take a health class. Anybody ever take a health class? It's basically a grown woman or man says penis and vagina, and you laugh right in her face. I got, a, I got a Christmas break assignment for my health class. Listen to this. What is your favorite disease and why? And I didn't do it. And I got in trouble. She's like, why didn't you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of diseases, let alone have one I call my favorite. It's like one of those messed up Facebook quizzes you get. Like, what disease are you? Hepatitis in the house. I know you guys are a little creeped out. I'm aware I look like a white black guy, okay? You know? You know, I'm tall, I have big lips, I like white bitches, you know? Somebody told me the other day I look like John Cryer, the gay dude from Two and a Half Men. Yeah, that's not a compliment at all. Like, nobody wakes up in the morning happy like, yeah, I look like John Cryer, awesome. No, it's awful. Because it's like one step away from Steve-O, from Jackass. That's what it is. <laughs> I, have a lot, I went to school in Brooklyn, so like the majority of my friends were black, and it was weird because like I was the only white guy. And like I watched TBS, it's never like that. It shouldn't be like that. Like, we were hanging out, and black people speak English, but it's not... English? Like, they're like, yo, Pete, I haven't seen you in a minute. I'm like, Jaquan, I haven't seen you in three months. What are you talking about? Do you have perception of time? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm still growing, which is weird. Like, I hope this height stops and my pee pee starts because. <laughs> brown and yellow, brown and yellow, brown. It's, I went outside when we had a snowstorm in New York, we had a blizzard, and I went outside the shovel and my neighbor was just like, hey dude, I hate to break it to you, which is, you know, always a great way to start a conversation. Hey dude, hey dude. So he goes up to me and he goes, hey, I saw your sister in the shower naked yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, wait, she's been gone for two weeks. What are you talking about? It was me. That's a, he was talking about me. I'm from Staten Island, uh, sorry. Uh, it's not a nice place, it's like where dreams go to die. That's what Staten Island is. Like all we have is like mob wives. You guys see mob wives? They all look like Fiona from Shrek after the transformation. I'm disgusting. 
There's a lot of things going on in my town, like 20-year-old women having sex with 13-year-old dudes, and uh, I think it's awesome. I think it should continue. I think it should. Because if I turn on Fox News and the guy's like, woman sexually offends 13 kids, ages 13 to 17, I would be camping in the woods. I'd hold the sign. I won't tell, please. You're only gonna help me. I'd say sexy things are turn a woman rapist on. Like, ah, guess who got food in his braces? <laughs> I don't like sluts though, because uh, I love them. Uh, like, they're great for the environment. Those, they're recyclable and... Like, I could be having the worst day of my life. My whole family could die in an accident, and I'd be really sad. I would. But as soon as I see boobs, I'm like, ah, I'll get over it. <laughs> they write great songs about sluts, like I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Anybody notice that? Every, every Christmas, just a nice little jingle. Can you imagine being that kid coming down the steps night before Christmas, like, mm, oh! Every time he sees a Christmas cookie, he has like a panic attack. All his friends are like, dude, I heard Santa's not even real. Oh yeah, Timmy? He banged my mom. No, he didn't. Look at my brother. He's an elf. Look at him. Look at him. First time I got a blowjob was in this dream I was having. Um, For, like, I like porn. Like, the first time I saw it, I was like eight. Like, I, I was watching porn at eight. I had no idea what it was, but I know I liked it. Like, I... <laughs> I just got my driver's license, which is, uh, cool. Um, I asked my mom if I get a car. I was like, Ma, I can get a car, right? She goes, yeah, you can get a 2011 Mongoose. But, like, I got excited because I'm stupid. And I Googled it. I was like, Mongoose, is this German? It's a bike. So apparently my mom's really funny, and I'm gonna save a lot of money on gas, and I got pegs in the front and the back for the bitches, which is nice. I'm gonna put Snooky on there and make an E.T. sequel. I can't wait. Uh, I, I, I used to, my mom like found my weed grinder, and uh, she was like, what is this? I'm like, it's a yo-yo. Like, I have to stop because it's just getting, it's getting bad, you know what I mean? Like, I started messing around with my drug dealer when he texted me, he'd be like, yo, Pete, I got that hairy fire. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you should get that checked out. That's, that's never good. <laughs> Before I go, I gotta tell you this. Um, I saw my mom naked recently, which, uh, it was an accident, don't judge me. Uh, I went to open the door to the bathroom, which she never locks, apparently, and I opened it, and yeah, I ruined my life. I saw it. And then I went downstairs and called my friend, because I'm an idiot, and I was like, dude, I saw my mom naked. It's awful. He's like, oh, that's weird. And I was like, no, it's not weird. It's an accident. It'd be weird if I opened the door, and I was like, nah, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> All the single ladies in the house say hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> What's up, you lonely bitches? <laughs> you lonely bitches. <laughs> Do the lonely bitch dance. <laughs> yeah, I'm lonely too. I'm lonely too. Remember back in the good old days when the only question you had to ask a man was, are you single? Now you got a straight interview. <laughs> are you single? Are you gay? Do you have HIV? Are you on the pipe? Do you have any children? The baby on the way counts. <laughs> As a baby! <laughs> you know what I didn't find out about myself? I think I'm just a little bit bitter. <laughs> I didn't realize it until stuff, you know, just started happening, little stuff. You know, just little, I'm just bitter. I didn't know it. I didn't know I had some little animosity in me. <laughs> I didn't know. 
stuff that's different, you know? Me and can't even compliment me no more. You know what I'm saying? Dang, Les, you sure look good. What the you mean I look good? <laughs> Why I can't look great? <laughs> Just bitter. And see, you can't do that, because I'm a comedian, you know? So all my jokes, every joke that I'm writing is coming out bitter now, you know? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because he's a <laughs> bastard. <laughs> That chicken don't like me. <laughs> hey guys, how are you doing? Cool. Well, uh, so before I did stand-up comedy, I actually wanted to be a singer. Um, and when I was a little girl, uh, Britney Spears one of my, was one of my favorite singers. And I thought about it, you know, like Britney Spears... Always wanted to be a singer ever since she was a little girl. And I thought, there had to be times where her family just couldn't stand the sound of her voice. You know, there had to be a time where her mom was driving her in her car and Britney's in the back seat, you know, and her mom's favorite song comes on the radio. Journey, maybe, and she's turning it up, you know, just, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. And then Britney had to kill in the back seat, just, she took the midnight train going anywhere. God, God damn it, Brittany. <laughs> or, or maybe it was her great grandma's birthday party and the whole family's like singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to grandma. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Yeah. <laughs> On Channel 4, yeah, yeah. And Scooby Doo. I don't know if I want to be 90. <laughs> yeah, I, I like singing, you know. Uh, I don't watch American Idol. I can't watch that show. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I, I just want Whitney Houston to go on stage and just show them all up, you know. I want her to just go on stage and just pop through the curtain, just, if I should stay. And they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to stay after I know. Um, but yeah, the baseball season's here. That's cool, right? Yeah, it's nice. I can I, I like baseball. I love going to see baseball games, but um, I don't like how the singers sing on sports games. You know, they sing the Star Spangled Banner. You know, and they always over exaggerate it. They just want to show off their voice. That's it. They don't really care about the lyrics. You know, they just oh, oh say, can you sing? Oh yeah! It's like stop it. You're annoying. <laughs> Cut it out. But I'm thankful for my voice, you know, I'm, I'm glad, it's, it's cool. I'm just glad I don't sound like Barbara Walters. That's a weird voice, I would hate to have that. Next stop, two for the price of one. <laughs> right, that's awful. I, w <laughs> I would hate to have to go and hang out with my friends knowing I sound like Barbara Walters just show up. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Over here, thanks for inviting me, nothing to do on this Friday evening. I can't wait to see the movie. Mmm, popcorn. <laughs> I figured this out too about Barbara Walters. Um, if she wanted to become a singer, she might end up sounding like Nora Jones. Yes, yes, I figured it out. Like she'd be in an interview, right? Hold on, Renee Zellweger, Shh, quiet. I hear a song coming on. Waited till I saw the sun. I don't know why I didn't call, but left you by the house of fun. I don't know why I didn't call in your face, Renee Zoega. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys a bit about myself, though. I'm, I'm uh, Mexican. I'm full Mexican, actually. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, and... Uh, People don't know that, though. People, when people ask me, you know, what are you, Melissa? I, I tell them the truth. I'm full Mexican. But they react as if I said, hey, I just pooped in my pants. <laughs> They'll be like, what are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm Mexican. Really? Wow, that's weird. Hmm. <laughs> Would have never guessed that. But yeah, and I also don't have a job right now. I was working at Disneyland, right, for like two days, and then I called it quits. They're, they're crazy over there. They're just really weird. 
Like when when I got the job though, Mickey Mouse he called me and he says, "Uh huh, you got the job." <laughs> and then and then when I quit, Mickey Mouse called me and said, "Uh huh, good riddance, bitch." <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm not uh, like obsessed with celebrities or anything like that. Like Kathy Griffin seems to be. Kathy Griffin seems like she'll talk about celebrities even off stage, like in her personal life. You know, maybe her husband's trying to have a romantic evening with her. And she's like. Oh, Kathy Griffin, you look so rom- like hot in that lingerie. She's like, do you like it, really? Yeah, I bought it because Tyra Banks was wearing it in the People magazine. That's why I bought it. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. Just come over and give me a kiss. <sighs> I only want to kiss like Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams did in The Notebook. That's the only way I'll kiss, okay? <laughs> um, what else is going on? My, uh, my friend, she uh, just broke up with her boyfriend recently or he broke up with her or something. And she was crying to me about it, right? And I didn't want to laugh because she sounded like Drew Barrymore when she was telling me that. She was like, um, Melissa, um, (laughs) my boyfriend just broke up with me. (laughs) And I don't know what to do. (laughs) She sounds like she's always crying in movies, Drew Barrymore, doesn't she? Even for happy things, just, um... This movie is going to be so funny. <laughs> I know it's going to be a box office hit. Yeah, my, my friend, though, she has kind of a low self-esteem. Sometimes I have a low self-esteem, too. And I notice what really helps me feel better about myself is watching Dora the Explorer. She is the best at that. Just turn on Dora, you know? She's like, can you find the shovel? Over there. <laughs> over there to the left, you Dora, right there. Right there. Thanks a lot. I'm Melissa Vistinger. Have a fun night. It's hard. It's hard out there. It's hard trying to find a man. No, oh. it is. And ladies, you gotta admit that we hold on to a lot of a lot of come from us. It ain't always the man's fault. Don't get quiet on me now, bitches. It ain't always the man's fault. We hold on to grudges too long. We gotta learn to let it go. I went out with this guy for three years. Great guy, great relationship. He cheated on me, but I forgave him. But ladies, do we ever really forget that? Hell no. Every time I got into an argument with him, I brought it right back up. Didn't even matter, we could be arguing over glue. We're like, nah! Cause you that bitch. Couldn't get away with nothing. He'd be like, yo, baby, you know we out of cookies. What? (laughs) Did that bitch eat them cookies? (laughs) I'm calling my girls. You eating cookies with this bitch? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, they eating cookies together. And he think you crazy. He's standing there going, no, the bitch did not eat the cookies, okay? The bitch didn't even like cookies. Didn't I see you eating some of them cookies? You the bitch who ate the cookies. We crazy. We too emotional. We the only species that would shoot our man six times. And we would go to the funeral. And be like, what? Shoot him! I told him I had a gun. Make some noise if you're alive. Yeah. A couple of y'all need to question your life choice. I love hip hop music, man. I was so excited to do this show, man. I was riding here, the old school hip hop, you know, the type that comes with instructions. Everybody, clap your hands. Clap your hands, everybody. I said you could be friends, we could be friends. Let's put a friendship and sail away. Nobody hates each other. What's a gun? You know what I'm talking about? Just friendly. 
It's a bunch of grown black men in jean jackets kicking it, you know what I mean? Just flapping it, just flapping the jean jacket. Just. How you scared of a man flapping a white wash jean jacket? Just, what's up, brother? <laughs> what's up? How you doing? The sun is shining. It's gonna be a great day. Nothing rhymed, it was just friendly, you know what I mean? Like, they were so friendly, they introduced themselves before they even talk about their struggle. My name is Alex and I'm here to say, nobody cares, Alex. What kind of rap name is that, brother? What rhymes with Alex? I ran with thugs, I'm from Chicago, so I ran with thugs 14 years of my life. They never fully accepted me. Part of the reason was because I spent half my life in the suburbs. A suburb called Naperville, which is the Orange County of Illinois. Being a thug from Naperville is like being a thug Care Bear. <laughs> like you can buy clothes to look the park, but you still start every day sliding down a rainbow slide with your friends. Wee! Thug life, we got both parents. <laughs> I know my daddy, he right over there. <gasps> Christmas is gonna be great. <laughs> My thug dreams, y'all. <laughs> also, I smile too much, you know what I mean? These thugs used to get mad at me when we were we in the club and you see all them, they, you see, you, see, you all look, look at the picture, they're like. And here's me, J just having a good day. Just having a good day. <laughs> I'm just saying that white people can walk up to you on the street and ask you for directions randomly, your thug level's not where it needs to be, okay? Like, stick them up. Like, how do I get to West Hollywood? Ah! Take a left, take this gun with you. People are crazy, watch your step. <laughs> I'm having a good day, okay. Crazy. It was 50 degrees, I was like, ooh, this is summertime. Cause I'm from Chicago where it's no numbers degrees. Absolutely no numbers. Somebody was like, it's cold. I'm like, you don't know what cold is, okay? If you ever walked outside of your house and rearranged your life depending on how the wind hits you, you ain't been cold before, okay? If you ever walked outside like, I want a divorce for no reason at all. You're not even married, you just want change in your life. Man, I was in uh, Atlanta when they got two inches of snow and shut the whole city down, right? And I was running around like, y'all don't know what cold is, smacking people in the face, like, what was that? I was like, that's what Chicago wind feels like, you know what I mean? <laughs> y'all appreciate it way more than they did. <laughs> but I met this one lady, she, she did not care at all, you know. I, was, I, I walked up to her, I'm like, hey, uh, Tanya, is it? Yeah. Um, we've been waiting like three and a half hours. Uh, do you have any updates, anything you can possibly tell us at all? Thank you for choosing Delta Airlines. <laughs> this is Tanya. <laughs> now I know some of y'all got questions. <laughs> I got questions too. But right now, we ain't boarding the plane because we can't find the captain. I don't know. I don't see him, so I don't know. So if you got any other questions, I'm gonna need you to be like Superman, lifting a Mustang and hold your horses. Thank you. I don't know why everybody's so mad about these two inches shutting the whole city down. I shut down every time I see two inches. You hear me, girl? Ah! Just ignorant. <laughs> Just ignorant, man. I'm so tired. Why did not parents ever tell us when you get older that you're gonna be tired forever. <laughs> All the time, I'm always tired.
it. They ask me, I could win the lottery. Like, how you doing, man? I'm rich, but tired. You know what I mean? Just always. <laughs> Other day I tried to go to sleep more, woke up more tired. How does that happen, science? Drank a coffee halfway, yawned. Am I dying, sir? Am I dying? <laughs> Have you ever woke up and look at your phone? I'm like, I could lose my job today. Went back to sleep. <laughs> I've done that 15 times. <laughs> so tired all the time. So my cousin came out recently. We were real proud of him. My family's from Mississippi, so he wanted to do it at Thanksgiving in Mississippi with 30 of my family members there. And he wanted my support. And I'm like, yeah, I can start the car for you. So. <laughs> no, I was like, I have his back. He texted me though, cause he was nervous about it. He was like, yo, cuz, I got something to tell the family. Ellipses. And I was like, cool, but why'd you spell out ellipses? <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Lead by example, lead by example. And then I text back like, you gay? Question mark. He's like, what? Exclamation points, et cetera. You know what I mean? <laughs> How'd you know? And I'm like, man, I've been known. I thought you was trapped in the closet. R. Kelly meme, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a beast with memes, dog. <laughs> He's like, no, for real, how'd you know? I was like, 13 years ago, I was kicking it with my cousin a couple of my homeboys. I got this naked picture, right? It was, it was this girl posed up like this, real whack pose. I don't know why she chose it, but. <laughs> You can see the bedroom in the black background, real classy. So just like a scumbag passed to all my friends. And so it got to my cousin. My cousin takes one look at the picture and he's like, she need to clean up her room. That is not Lady Light. Like, what? <laughs> you looking at the wrong thing, brother. But he was right. That girl was filthy. <laughs> I broke up with her that day. I was like, clean your room. Click, dirty girl. Need to do some chores. <laughs> Thanksgiving coming, all my family's at the table, right? All right. <laughs> my, my cousin kicks down the door. Pfft, everybody stop eating. <laughs> I've got something to say. For as long as I could ever remember, I've been gay. So eat on that. <laughs> and everybody was quiet, but I was laughing like, <laughs> eat on that. That pun was ridiculous. <laughs> You better kill him. I wanted to high five him, but it wasn't the time. <laughs> my dad was sitting there mid scoop, like frozen. My uncle was in there just holding the Bible for no reason at all. <laughs> so he looked at me. I was like, I got you. So I stood up and I was like, uh, <clears throat> uh, everybody, clap your hands. Clap your hands, everybody. I said, he's gay. We already knew he's gay. It's 2015. Don't be a bigot. <laughs> and my dad was like, Chris, we already know he's gay, but you too. Congratulations. Thank you, Chris Ray. Y'all have a great night. And we too picky too, ladies. Too picky. Picky, 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 ladies. Picky and lonely are best friends. <laughs> and the enemy of happiness. Sat down and wrote down a list of qualities that I wanted from a man. Type of man that's gonna sweep me off my feet. Type of man that's gonna take me there. And when I finished that list, he's too damn good for me. <laughs> I need to get my together, you know? <laughs> need to go back to school or something. He is <laughs> He was to see me on the street, he would walk right past me. He'd be like, bitch, get out the way, bitch. <laughs> We're not being honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to find somebody with the least amount of manageable problems. Count how many problems you got, homegirl. Go out and find a man with that many problems. Because I get tired of hearing women talk about their man. They got a good man. I ain't got no man. And you complaining. I don't want to be here no more. Why? He good to you. He does nice things for you. He got your back when you need him. So what that got a wooden foot? <laughs> You ain't looking at the positive stuff in your life. What if you sitting at a picnic one day and somebody started up a kickball game? (laughs) 
Now you got the best man on your team. <laughs> Yo, my name is Les Lay. Oh, thank you guys. Who knows if I deserve it? Find out together, huh? 2016, we're into it. I'm bummed, because 2015 was a huge year for me. I, uh, I turned 21 years old in 2015, yeah. All grown up, and to prove it, I moved right back home to my parents' house. <laughs> it was time to get back home, you know? God, mom's getting into her mid to late 40s now, and it's time that someone be there to take care of her. <laughs> it hits you like a ton of bricks. You realize I've only got 40, 50 years left with these people. What's important becomes obvious real quick. Mom, she's suffering from the first stage of Alzheimer's, which is not having it at all. Because to get it, you've gotta not have it. And I'll put that on a t-shirt, save a life or two. <laughs> Thank you guys. I take care of them. My parents live with me at their house. That's the situation. <laughs> I'm a super nice guy, moving back home, helping it. Oh man, I'm ready for, uh, ready for winter to be over. Get those water parks back open. You guys like water parks? I'm there every day. If I can be, you don't even need a kid. You can just like buy a ticket as an adult and go alone. I had no clue. Love water parks, community pools. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, I wouldn't bathe with a stranger, but 40 of them all at once? That was actually, I'll take a dip, huh? I'll peek a toe in there. Peek a toe. I've never said that before in my life. <laughs> Love water parks. Super into them. Love large people at water parks. You know, I like it when they wear t-shirts. <laughs> it's like, we still know. I put a cover on a car, it doesn't turn into a motorcycle. Be yourself, take that shirt off. Take your shirt off. Take your shirt off. Take your shirt off. Sir, shirt off. Sh -sh -sh shirt off. Oh, you have scars? Put the shirt back on. I didn't know, full story, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, should have read the back of the book, huh? <laughs> I graduated college in 2015, yeah, uh-huh. Well, a mm, mm, degree in literature, because I have uh, an allergy to money or any sense of a financial future. Uh, good news, though. It doesn't look like I'll be having an allergic reaction anytime soon. I, I have no prospects for myself. No, I am hungry, though. I am hungry, though. I have so little money that I like to walk into the 99-cent store with a $20 bill just to brighten my day up. You guys... You guys do that, huh? Feel like a rapper. Take a minute out of your day, feel like a rapper. You'll live a better life. My last $20 bill, waving it around. Waving it. Walk up to an employee, throw it on him, make it rain, as they say. Tell him to buy something nice. Or 20 things not as nice. It's their story at that point. Then pick up your $20 bill off the ground and for, you know, because you forgot why you're there in the first place. That's the worst part of making it rain, in my experience, is picking up my money off the ground afterwards and apologizing to everyone as I leave. <laughs> oh, man, I, uh... <laughs> you guys like the haircut? Yeah. Thanks. Got a place called Great Clips. <laughs> Presumptuous name there. I, uh... Man, how many, how many times do you guys think I've been to prison? Five or six? Is, is the look working? I'm going for prison look. So I hang out with people in prison, you know? When I'm not busy looking like a lesbian, I need to do something with my time. I need street cred, and it's not gonna be my stepfather's jean jacket that I'm wearing. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come out and say something, guys. I've realized this is, a, this is a safe zone. This is not something that I like, that I feel when I go to this place, but I do feel it when I go to this wonderful place. Have you guys been to Disneyland on one of those days where your friend is like, you know, November's the best day to go. And then you get there and you're like, well, I guess everyone knew that November was the best <laughs> time to go. Because everyone's here in the world. 
and you're just, you're in line, and it's the third hour, Space Mountain. You know, you're sweating. You've been on two rides. You paid $109 to get in. <laughs> and just for a second, a small smidge of a second, you catch yourself getting a little jealous of the people in wheelchairs. Is that a wheelchair? You mean the permanent fast pass, huh? Three hours for Space Mountain? I'll take a crack the old vertebrae, soak it up in a world where all of my meals are on wheels. I told that joke at a show, and this woman was disgruntled. And uh, she came up to me afterwards and she said, Michael, I want to let you know that I have a paralyzed son. And that joke you told it hurt, and it's not okay. And I said, oh my god, could I take him to Disneyland? <laughs> you get a fast pass too. They're not just going to let him ride the ride alone. It's foolproof. It's foolproof. Get yourself an unfortunate child. Go to Disneyland. Make your day better. <laughs> I said I lived with my parents earlier, but um, I actually live with my mom's because my parents are divorced. But the good thing about that is I recently became the owner of uh, a new stepfather. Thank you. It's super exciting getting a stepdad at 21. Huh? It's like picking up a penny off the ground. Your life has not changed at all. Everything's the same. Everything's the same. He's a cool dude, though. His name's Terry. This is his jean jacket. He's in Ireland. You go to Ireland without me, I'm gonna wear your jean jacket for like three weeks. And he's only in Ireland for two. <laughs> Terry is a, he's a, he's a guy that looks like his name, if that makes any sense. If you think of it, Terry, you're probably pretty close. He's a very spiritual man. He does a lot of yoga. He's not a fan of clothing. I've seen him naked three times. He knows this. We've yet to talk about it. <laughs> that is, I don't know how many more dinners I can go through. <laughs> not mentioning that. I don't know if you've ever seen your stepfather naked one time. There's really not too much to say about it other than you do not think it's going to happen two more times. <laughs> if you think... You think clearly the worst thing in the world that could happen has happened. That's going to be the end of that. And now it's just like every Tuesday, I'm going to go see what Terry's got for me. <laughs> Anyways, what I've done before I get out of here is I've created a small list of demands uh, for my mother and Terry to both meet if I'm going to be okay with this new father figure in my life. I just want to go through a small list of demands that I've written on a napkin I found in the green room. So this is just, uh, these are demands before their marriage that they all must follow. Here we go, okay. Number one. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> On the edge of your seats, are you? <laughs> Number one, I demand to be the ring bearer at your wedding. I also demand your ring be ring pops, as I believe it sets the tone to how serious a third marriage really is. <laughs> Slamming them. Wedding day. Ah, oh, composure. Um, I demand you have a child. I want a little brother with too much of an age gap to be emotionally attached, but will still grow up in my shadow as I'm going to be in show business. <laughs> Fun, huh? Twice a month I get to ask Terry why he doesn't do things as good as my real dad. Oh. Yeah, it's my house first. I'll let him know it. I'll sit in his favorite chair for a weekend in my underwear. I don't care. I'll send a message. I do patrols. <laughs> and last but not least, I demand Terry teach me how to ride a unicycle. It's half a bike and he's half a father. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Michael Longfellow. You've been fantastic.